Hello, it's Aaron here from Last Stand Gamers, and today I've got something a little bit different for you. I've got a review of the WE Scar L, or the Mark 16 Mod Zero. Basically, this is a fully licensed model by WE that uh, make a really realistic blowback rifle for us. So let's have a look at some of the features. One of the features that draws you to the rifle, of course, is the actual markings itself. It's fully licensed this, so we've got the Mark 16 Mod Zero and we've got the Cal 5.56mm, as well as a unique serial number. Moving on, we have the fire select switch, so we've got safe, one and auto. Yours won't come with these markings, I've filled these in. and recommend you do it as well, because it looks very nice. Moving a bit back up the rifle, we've got the upper metal receiver. The whole receiver that long runs along the top has a full length rail two side rails and one underneath rail so it's going to really meet all your rail needs. Along this rail we have a flip up sight that comes with the rifle, both front and rear flip ups with a simple press like so, so these are really good backup start sights as standard. Okay, moving down the rifle obviously we've got a mag release, we've got a secondary release there, we've got sling loops here, here and one on the other side as well. So basically it offers you with a real good all round sort of position to either do a one point, two point or even a three point sling loop setup. Moving to the stock. My stock has seen a little bit of better days. Obviously I'm always jumping around and in skirmish fields trying to get the best position as possible and it might involve crawling for a few bushes. So basically we have a stock here with six positions like so. So it can even reach the furthest of um, biggest down people and especially if you're wearing a plate carrier you can have it all the way in as well. A little warning you will lose this rubber pad if you don't sellotape it down or stick it down with some sort of form of glue gun. I've just used duct tape here because I've not had time to get the glue gun out yet. Moving up we have a cheek rest so we can move it up, I think it's three positions. And here we have the folding action. Folding action here, comes in here and locks in there quite securely and it's got very little shake. Okay, now we've covered the basic features. You guys are not here I know just to find out about the gun itself, you're here to find out the problems and if you're going to buy this gun, what are the issues with it? So let's put the weapon down because the problems don't actually rely in the weapon. Let's take out the magazines. I've took the external hold off them, so basically here's the external shell. Took that off them. Right, we've got a Gen 1 here and we've got a Gen 2 magazine. Basically, as you can see, this Gen 1 magazine has required a lot of repair jobs mainly because it has this rear strip that has to actually trap all the gas in where this Gen 2 is trapped through the middle and it has a much better seal so let's have a look at both of the magazines, they look quite similar of course this is a problem because retailers will label them as a WE M4 magazine so you've got to make the choice and you've got to ask, actually ask them is it a Gen 1 or Gen 2? they will cost you the same price do not get Gen 1 magazines, even if they're going cheaper, because the amount of trouble you'll have with them is not worth it. Gen 2 are the way forward. There is ways of resealing Gen 2, but obviously when you get one problem with one of these magazines, I'd rather have none at all. So let's put them down. Okay, so let's have a look at the open bolt system. Obviously WE made another SCAR without an open bolt system, so how does the open bolt system work? I've got mine like an AK platform here to manipulate, obviously make sure we're on fire. And as you can see, there's no brass tubing in there. And if I just close the bolt, you can hear that very satisfying metal slang. Right, I'll hold it back. And what you can hear then is basically what happens is the actual seal inside with the adapter has to make a connection so the gas can actually get all the way through and actually work the bolt. Okay? So instead of using that clear plastic or metal sort of colored bolt, basically it makes a seal. You'll hear it. You can hear that seal? And basically, once that's locked in place, the gas will feed perfectly and it'll cycle your magazines great. Okay, so let's get on to the actual shooting of it. What I'm going to do is put that down on the table, and I'm going to get the Gen 2 magazine. Slip it in its housing, like so. Basically, you put a screw in there. For the purposes of this, you just want to see it shoot, so not going to matter that much. So we're going to lock it in place. Right. For the purpose of this, what I'm going to do, I'm not going to hold it in my shoulder, I'm just going to hold it by the magazine and pull the trigger, just so you can demonstrate what the recoil feels like, alright? So here we go. You see that? Let's do a few more shots, do a three burst. Alright, so we've got quite a bit of recoil there, but remember I'm holding it by the centre, so it might exaggerate a little bit. Let's go on full auto. Okay, there's not much gas in this magazine, so we'll see what we can do. Okay, I'm going to bring it back a bit from the camera for this one. Now obviously there's a lot of recoil, and a lot of people t 
talk about gas blowback rifles not being accurate. Okay, so let's put that back down. Let's move on to some of the other features that are problematic. Let's move to the front of the rifle. Obviously, we've got this very nice screw on, screw off thing, so we can add a silencer, extend the barrel, so on, so on. But the problem relies here. You are provided with a key that simply unscrews from there. Let's lift this side up. Simple pressing. So basically what happens is when you're moving around, you're jumping around, so on, moving around the skirmish field, this can fall off. So you really want to pay attention to that. What you can either do is get a bit of blue tack, just make sure it's stuck in there, or you can take it off. Sadly I lost mine, so accessing the sides requires me to actually find the tool at the garage. Okay, so with that tool you can take off the sides and sides, and if you want to see a disassembly job of this rifle, you want to click around here now, and I'll do a separate video when it's up. Okay. Basically, if you want to learn more about the magazines, just click up here, and basically I'll do a full review and tell you even how to fix the Gen 1 magazines if you've suffered and decided to buy one. So how much is this rifle going to set you back? Well, it set me back £275, but what are you getting? Well, you're getting realistic style magazines, so we're talking 30 rounds, and there's only some people who can know what I'm talking about when I say it is intense when you're moving into a building, you've only got 5 or 6 magazines. 30 rounds in each and you're not sure exactly how many rounds you've got in that magazine. You've tried your best to count but the combat's happened, you've lost count and there's nothing like having to perfect a tactical reload in the middle of the battle or even having a reason now to switch to your secondary. Okay, so you've seen this, it's a very nice weapon and it's very sort of, it's weighty but the balance is correct. So basically if I hold it by the centre here we can work out the balance. Normally a cheaper rifle would have a more of a rear balance where the stock and the battery would hold but this is a one-to-one -one scale notice how the pistol grip is one-to-one -one scale and it's actually exchangeable with real parts as well as you've got this full rail system a warning about the rail system is that if you don't wear gloves you will cut your hands so either get some rail covers or get a nice pair of gloves together basically that is concluding this part of the review if you have any questions at all I've had this rifle for quite a while now and I've took it through to a few skirmishes so if you want to know anything then I'll try to find it out and get the information. The bare statistics will be in the bottom of the description. So thanks for watching and hopefully you enjoyed this. And this is my Pride rifle at the moment and it is a beautiful one. So if you're thinking of buying it, definitely check it out.